Welcome back to the classroom. Today I want to take a couple minutes and talk to you about the number one ball handling skill that all young players need to possess. As you know, basketball has become extremely perimeter oriented. People are, are penetrating now more than ever. They are driving and trying to get to the rim. They're driving and kicking out for the three. And so it doesn't matter whether you're a traditional post player or a traditional guard, you need to be able to handle the ball in today's game. Now, because there is so much attention given to ankle breakers, a lot of young players are either ignoring or they're shying away from some of the very basic essential skills that they need. Now, there's lots of great dribble moves out there. You can go behind your back, you can go between your legs, you can cross over, you can spin, you can go inside out. All of those are great moves, and at some point in your career, you're going to want to acquire them and, and add them to your game, especially if you want to keep progressing and playing at higher levels. But the most important tool that you can use when it comes to ball handling is not really a move at all, but it's a skill. And that is the ability to change speeds while you're dribbling the basketball. Now this skill is, is so simple that it's often overlooked. Coaches just assume that players already know how to do it. And so they don't teach it as much as they used to. Now there's three phases to learning and to teaching the skill. Acceleration, stopping on a dime, and then hesitate and re-accelerate. Now in the first phase, acceleration, you're simply going as fast as you can from point A to point B while still maintaining control of the basketball. Now obviously different players, depending on their athleticism and their experience, are gonna go are gonna go faster. Some are gonna go faster, some are gonna go slower. The important thing is not that you go faster than anybody else. The important thing is that you go as fast as you can go. The second phase is stopping on a dime. Now, the law of physics says that the faster you go, the harder it is to stop. So this phase needs some practice so you can execute it without traveling. Now, the simplest way to, to stop on a dime is just to plant your heel into the ground first. And when you do this, this is going to help you decelerate and you're going to come to a shoe screeching stop without falling over and losing your balance. The third phase is to hesitate and reaccelerate. This is what's going to happen. You're going to dribble at full speed. Your defender is going to stay with you. At some point, you're going to stop on a dime. Since your defender doesn't know when you're going to stop, chances are he is going to take at least one extra step. At that point, he is going to realize that you've stopped, and he is going to try to recover. In order to do that, he is probably going to rise slightly up out of his stance as he comes back towards you. What you need to do is hesitate long enough for him to try to recover and to come out of his stance. And as soon as he does that and stands up, then you reaccelerate and blow right by him. I don't care how quick, how athletic, how fast your opponent is, it would be impossible for him to keep you from blowing by him if he is coming towards you in an in a upright stance while you're dribbling past him. Look, it sounds simple, but it's, it's going to make a world of difference in your game. Accelerate. Stop on a dime. Hesitate and reaccelerate. As soon as you master those three phases of the skill, you can incorporate them into any other dribble move you ever use. And once you do that, you're going to be well on your way to becoming a more complete player.